The importance of a typeface when communicating something visually is often understated when we analyze or consume media. The graphical identity of not only memes, but a variety of media lend to its cultural or social reach. The fonts and typefaces on memes are often overlooked when talking about their cultural importance. In the case of Impact Font, the medium of memes in this format are emboldened by it. Literally. This is internet iconography. The net is fast and evil. The mid-1960s ushered upon radical changes culturally, and in the world of graphic design and marketing, design needed to be modernized and lean away from the antiquated typefaces that signal 1950s picturesque America. Advertisements and the general look of the decade were often flamboyant, bombastic, and generally jovial. Conversely, the cultural zeitgeist and the advent of postmodernism forced graphic design and typefaces to change drastically and made the tone of advertisements about the weight and importance of the subject rather than being overly bombastic and popping out. Bold condensed sans serifs were the new normal, leading a new era of aesthetic and organized design. This new design philosophy brought sophistication to consumers, often focusing on the individual rather than the family unit. In 1965, Jeffrey Lee designed the eponymous Impact font. Impact was mainly used for headlines and display, as it doesn't make for a good reading experience as a subtitle or the main body of text. Impact, as a typeface, is rectangular and uniform, lending itself to proliferation rather than readability or aesthetics. Impact was born out of metal typecasting, meaning that uniformity was contingent on its material creation. Remember this for later, it's extremely important. In the 1990s, personal computers using Windows introduced a diverse cast of digitally converted fonts, which included the ubiquitous Impact. The early adoption of this font in every version of Windows, along with other fonts like the legendary Times New Roman and the utility powerhouse Courier, led to a new philosophy in digital design. The creativity and formality of design was now constrained to a new and innovative medium in the digital realm, manifesting a tiny sandbox that with enough pressure creatively could lead to more innovation through constraint. Impact survived and thrived through the digital age on its mass compatibility alone. Many typefaces and fonts fell into obscurity due to the lack of evolution and integration into the digital age. It has become a staple in word processing and crappy yard sale flyers around the world. What's more, Impact's legacy morphed anew with the advent of pre-ironic meme culture in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Impact as a font is cogent and uniform. It isn't angular and it rests upon its weight for visual conveyance. More importantly, it's easily automatable. Impact's use in memes are mostly attributed to not only its visual identity as a condensed and bold typeface, but because of its ease of use within our digital assets. Meme generator websites don't have a hard time integrating the font seeing as Impact has been a staple of Microsoft and other software companies' font libraries for three decades. You would have to deliberately get rid of Impact font from your library. And even then, most meme generators have Impact font fixed within their code. Impact wasn't the chosen one for the memes in the macro image format. It was simply convenient and easy to use for repetition. It grew to be the cultural touchstone for memes throughout its constant repetition. What's impressive about Impact is how easy it fits into the mold naturally regardless of it being anachronistic. Referring to the aforementioned history of the font, it began as a metal typecasting font despite photo typecasting coming into prominence in design. Even in its conception, it was quite antiquated. We can't always rely on yesterday's tools for today's work. At Mergenthaler, we make a tool for the graphic arts industry. A sophisticated tool using modern electronics to perform one of the most vital functions in printing and publishing. High speed photo type setting. It's a cathode ray tube photo type setting system called Linotron 505. It produces high quality topography, up to 10 times faster than some conventional photo composing machines 
and at far lower cost than other cathode ray tube systems. The top text and bottom text formula of memes falls right in line with what pre-ironic meme culture needed. The bold headline typeface worked to emphasize and organize the punchlines or ideas a meme was meant to convey. If we change the font on this meme, it will look unnatural. This could be because of how conditioned we are to it, but if we remove ourselves from the years of history, we can see that the eponymous impact font is one of the best choices for memes, or at least condensed bold headlight type fonts are. Consistency and repetition are key to the prevalence of meme culture. Memes aren't a free creative outlet. The restrictions and rules lend to its stability. Memes work within these restrictions and mutate according to their initial intention. This is especially apparent in pre-ironic meme culture, more specifically the advice animals era. The two most important elements of pre-ironic memes are image and text. The text and image's synchronicity form a meme's core idea. Velociraptor is the best example of these principles in action. The impact font is the main indicator that this is in fact a meme, and the image is the indicator that the idea behind the macro is inquisitive or whimsical in a smart way. Despite this formula being very restrictive when communicating, it is effective as the repetition and reach of a meme itself gives a base for an idea. Velociraptor was so ubiquitous on Reddit and was often used to ask interesting questions and spark discussion. It is often understated how memes can start or continue dialogue on a subject. At this point in internet history, it is deeply rooted in our cultural subconscious that when we see impact font on anything, it is related to memes. Ooh, eat spicy goodness like a boss. Using this outside of an image macro or meme is now considered a bad aesthetic choice when going about design. Thankfully, due to innovation in digital design, there are hundreds upon thousands of fonts similar in stature to impact that we can use instead. Fonts and typefaces, in many ways, are sentient. How we use fonts and their initial properties gives them life and personality. Example being the Blue Shades font Hivetus, a purely uppercase bold condensed sans serif. I'm guilty of using Hevetus as long text in my videos, which has really been a bad design choice. It looks awful to read in lengthy bodies of texts. However, my choice in using these fonts were almost just the same as Impact with memes. I wanted this font to be my visual identity. Hevetus' own life is contingent upon its use in a functional sense. It serves an aesthetic design rather than something far greater like Impact. But Impact's cultural legacy is based on how it's used as an aesthetic. Impact has survived multiple generations of technological shifts despite its immediate obsolescence within the design field. Only a few fonts will ever experience such an interesting life of their own and proliferate themselves as Impact continues to do. Impact's existence is immortalized, despite its digital incarnation being closely associated with pre-ironic memes. In the realm of post- and meta-ironic memes, the font itself has seen a deconstructionist renaissance. Post-ironic and meta-ironic memes have continually commentated on the past pre-ironic meme structure of the advice animal's days. It calls impact as a font into the abstract to examine its aesthetic and cultural value to memetics. The mere existence of bottom text meta-ironic memes is entirely about this concept. But what makes it often misunderstood is how much the font matters in the humor, in execution. It is often examined under a lens of absurdity, but not often examining its aesthetic value. These type of post-ironic or meta-ironic memes are grotesque by design, but impact almost never changes. These memes comment on the standardization of impact as a cultural repeater. It simply continues its proliferation of its own legacy, transcending multiple different communicative philosophies and methods. Even with the font's own inherent creative limitations, it is still being explored creatively. Impact's own restrictions and lack of sandbox space is what allows it to fly even further into the future. When engaging in discourse on memetics, we need to consider that there is a conflict and constant state of revolution between repetition and evolution. Memes copy themselves as a form of proliferation, only looking for mutations and changes if it elongates its runtime. However, the low fidelity of the copy is the main feature of internet memes. It is what makes up memetics in culture. Impact as a font is integral to that creative process when using or creating a meme. 
Changing the font of a meme reduces the cultural quality of said meme further, degenerating its lifespan and overall value. Impact's legacy is understated, and in a fast culture where a meme's lifespan is shorter than the amount of days you can count on your fingers, the little details and choices make all the difference sometimes. I can attempt to write or preach about Impact's influence here, but the truth is, is that Impact will continue to exist solely out of necessity for its own survival, like me and you. And nothing is truly dead until it's forgotten. Hey guys, uh, thanks for watching. If you really like this video, hit the like button, uh, subscribe, share the video around. I'm sure people want to hear uh, a brief history and examination of impact font in the most um, non-cursory way possible. <laughs> but uh, I certainly put a lot of effort into writing this and wanted to make it a, a dense video. And I, I'd like to keep that trend going with this series. And uh, I'm going to save this for like an intro video later, but... If you made it to the end, uh, uh, internet iconography is more about memes than it is the actual internet. Internet iconography is just another way of saying internet memes, but I'm just saying it like more sophisticated. I'm trying to make this more of an intellectual show about memetics. Um, and if you're really into that, please try and support the series by just hitting like and commenting and engaging with this content. Uh, yeah, and I hope to put a lot more content than I usually do out. Uh, might not be weekly. I'm going to try and make it weekly because I'm going to have to streamline a lot of the processes with this. This video took a lot of time to edit and a lot of my motivation was pulled away just because I didn't think it looked good enough. And I still kind of don't think it probably will look good enough, but you know, um, better done than perfect, you know.